What is up everyone? Welcome back to a new video. This is a widely requested video you guys have been asking about for the longest time. And we're gonna do a cost breakdown of not only just owning your own aircraft in general, but my 1975 A36 Bonanza. So if you guys are ready, smash the thumbs up button and let's get into it. So you guys seem to really enjoy two videos ago, me showing you guys the new hangar that this baby is parked in. And because of that and the feedback, the views, the engagement, you guys really enjoyed it. I'm gonna start implementing a lot more general aviation content onto this channel. So if there's some individual topics you guys want me to talk about, whether that's general aviation, whether that's more videos like cost breakdown and cost analysis of general aviation, or even airline content, make sure you let me know it down in the comments down below. So now let's talk about this 1975 A36 Bonanza. The original list price was $180,000 and we walked away from the deal paying $150,000. There were a couple problems that we walked into, uh, some paint on the tail and then the propeller but right off the bat we asked what his bottom line was and he dropped at ten thousand dollars right off the bat so then we learned that there was an issue with the propeller and it needed a full new propeller which runs about ten to fourteen thousand dollars which is very expensive however long story short we ended up finding someone that could overhaul the prop because they found some parts that they thought were non-existent because of how old the aircraft is and so we ended up saving some money there and we got them all the way down to 150,000. So some basic hours on the aircraft. It's got 9,200 now, we got it with 9,000. It was a brand new engine, which engine overhauls, as a lot of you know, can be very, very expensive. I believe the engine overhaul was 35,000 on this aircraft alone. So we had it with only 25 hours on the new engine, which was phenomenal. TBO on this is around 1,700. Uh, so basically we'll never be able to get to that TBO on this aircraft whether that's we move up to something like maybe a twin engine in the future But for now this does everything we could ever ask for so we've got the new propeller uh, Oh, I guess the new propeller overhaul. We've got a new alternator. We've got a new governor Which the alternator is around a thousand or 1400 bucks and then the governor was around 2000 So all in all the whole front end of the aircraft is essentially new when it comes to I guess being overhauled and then having having a, like essentially a brand new engine. Whenever you overhaul an engine, they go in, they break down, they replace cylinders. It's just an absolute phenomenal job. And it's just very comforting knowing you have a brand new engine up here. All right, so now that we've talked about overall cost of the aircraft and what we've spent, I guess, you know, putting the engine together and the overhaul, let's go inside and talk about what a lot of people are here for. And that's cost breakdown of beautiful avionics. So let's do it. All right, now let's break down the panel. So I'm gonna start back whenever we first purchased the airplane and talk about the avionics that were in here before. It, it definitely didn't look like this before. So we had, before these G5s, which I'll talk about the price of G5s and the 750 and everything we've put in here now, but prior, we just had an AI attitude indicator and an HSI, which we ended up moving down below originally before we got all this amazing stuff. And then we had a non ADSB compliant transponder and we had a Garmin 530 before. So although it was a, a well-equipped aircraft in the sense of GPS, but we really, having this glass has really made a big difference. And anyone that's transitioned from traditional round dial to you know, having some sort of glass in the airplane, it just makes your overall situational awareness better and your, of course, scan. So we've kind of done this step by step, you know, because it's expensive. Avionics are very expensive as you'll learn in just a minute. But I'll start over here with the G5s because that's the first thing that we took. We flew this Bonanza around for about four or five months with just the old round dials and the 530. And then the first thing we did, which if you guys have been around for a while, you know that in the previous aircraft that we owned, the Piper Dakota, we also had dual G5s. So 
These G5s, this is essentially just a PFD, a really, really small PFD, where you've got your airspeed indicator, your attitude indicator, your vertical speed, and your altitude. And then down here is just an electronic HSI, which it talks to, it's the nice thing about having all Garmin avionics is everything syncs very well and it talks to each other very well. So communication is key when it comes to technology and aircraft. So if I pull up a localizer approach or I pull up an RNAV approach, the HSI will automatically switch over there. So it's very nice. And as you've seen in previous videos, you guys know what this looks like all lit up, but I don't want to sit here and eat up a bunch of battery because we don't have an external power for this aircraft. So we've got these two G5s. That was the first thing that we did. The first G5, we actually did these together. I want to say they were right around $5,000 each. And keep in mind, bear with me during this video, a lot of these are very estimated values. They're pretty close, but make sure you do your own research. A lot of this equipment you can also get pre-owned. Uh, some will come certified from Garmin, some will be inspected from previous aircraft owners, and then mechanics will look into it. So definitely do your research when you're looking up avionics, but prices can fluctuate a few thousand dollars here and there. But we spent around $5,000 each and around $1,000 to $1,500 for install for each. So you're looking around maybe six thousand dollars total for each of them so ten to twelve thousand dollars is what you'll look for in dual g5s and like i said we still have our backup airspeed indicator altitude vertical speed we've got a turn coordinator and a backup hsi because redundancy is very nice especially when it comes to ifr flying so between these i think this is a major upgrade and it's something that is very low cost in the sense of aviation that really helps just i guess your overall sense of flying your like i said situational awareness and then just flying ifr in general and yes the 530 in here before was very efficient but you know me and my dad fly this together a lot and he just likes having the bigger screen it's easier to maneuver having a touch screen is very nice so the G5s were the first, and then the next step was getting a new transponder, a new GMA, which is an audio panel, which I'll talk about in a second, and then the 750. So the transponder, as many of you know in general aviation, the FAA put out a notice saying that all aircraft have to be ADS-B, um, I guess, approved and be able to have ADS-B out at least by, I believe it was 2021. So this year was the first year that the FAA uh, really, you know, initiated that. And then of course, this is ADS-B in and out, which is very nice. So you can see traffic as well. And like I said, having Garmin equipment all together that it communicates well with each other, having traffic come up right here on the 750 is very nice. So this audio panel, it's very nice in the sense of we have, which I'll show you guys in a minute in the back of the aircraft. We take passengers a lot, my mom, you know, whoever it might be, friends, family. And if it's just me and my dad talking up here when we're flying, or if it's me and another pilot, and we're talking about storms, or we're just trying to listen just the ATC in general, we can isolate us alone. And then also I can isolate just myself, which is very nice. So if they're in the back chit-chatting about whatever, and you just need to focus on here, then that's really nice. So you have crew isolation, then you have music, you can play music for everyone, and then you can isolate yourself so you don't hear the music. It's very nice. So having the GMA with Bluetooth, uh, hooking up to your phone, hooking up to your uh, iPad, so that way you can show even more stuff up on the 750 is very nice. And then, so we got the GMA and the transponder and the 750 all together. The 750 is expensive. This is a very, very nice piece of equipment. And this was kind of like a dream. I've always wanted a 750 in one of my aircraft and it's just nice to finally have because the touch screen, it's very efficient, it's very fast. You can pull up approach plates and that's something very nice. If you know, if your iPad died, if your phone died, whatever it might be, you can pull up all your charts, loan route charts, weather is great here. We got the 750 GMA transponder together. Transponder and the GMA were about 2,000 each with about a thousand dollar install. And then the 750 runs about 14, 15 thousand dollars. And that's another few thousand dollars on top of that install. So we've got six, six, two, and two. So that's 14 plus another 14, 15 right there. So we're right around 30,000 plus. And then we've got, this was the latest and greatest thing. And this is so nice. So before we did have the old school 
uh, autopilot that was in here. I'm going blank on the name of it, but it came with the aircraft and obviously it's very old. So it wasn't nearly up to date like this new GFC 500. This thing is absolutely beautiful. It's more technologically advanced than the Embraer 145 that I fly right now in the sense of it has vertical nav, which is very, very nice. I didn't think it was a big deal, but whenever I come back in VFR into Concord, which sits under Charlotte's class Bravo, it's nice to set up VNAV waypoints in the sense of we can stay under the shelves coming in. Like if I'm coming from Charleston, the shelves start at like 7,000, then five, then four and 3,600. So we set up VNAV points and it'll keep a nice rate of descent under the class Bravo the entire time. And then, um some other things about the g500 it obviously talks to the garmin 5 over here the g5 and it gives us a flight director which is so nice so we've got a flight director over here so whatever input you put up here you obviously always verify over here on the g5 we've got vertical speed we've got vnav we have indicated airspeed and the latest and greatest thing that we also added with this was a yaw damper so for anyone that doesn't know what a yaw damper is it essentially just uh, maintains oscillation in the tail. It just keeps it nice and sturdy. It doesn't seem like it's fishtailing all over the place. It's a very nice feature to have. So with the yaw damper comes more servos and we actually ended up replacing all servos on the aircraft. So aileron, elevator, yaw damper, there's multiple servos when it comes to the autopilot. So with the autopilot, overall price on that was about another, I think 10,000 for the autopilot and four to 5,000 for the servos install. So like I said, we were at 30 before, now we're closer to 45, $50,000 in avionics. The next dream, I'll wrap this up in here, I would love to have a G3X Touch. Me and my father would love to put one of those in there, but that can be very, very expensive and will be closer to $100,000 in a panel because at that point, you would obviously fully customize the panel in here. You just want it to look very sleek if you're gonna have a, like a fully glass panel. We'll use the G5s as backup, but G3X Touch, I'll talk about that later on in another video as we approach that potential date of install but that'll also be a full customized panel. It's very, very nice. So that's the dream of this panel. I think it's set up beautifully right now. It gets the job done, but G3X Touch, potentially a JPI engine analyzer, a big screen right here, and then having this stack further over. So that's a dream. Let's head to the back and I'll show you guys kind of the cabin class seating and the A36 fittings. All right, so the nice thing about an A36 Bonanza is the, we call them barn doors back here and cabin class seating. So we've got four seats back here, which technically we have two right now, but this is the way we like to fly most of the time. And yes, Bella loves to fly. She's been up in the air about three or four times now. And we typically, when Bella flies, we'll put two rear seats right here. So they'll face backwards and we throw her bed down right here. So there's tons of room back, back here. You've got a fold out table, which we don't use because it's just super old and I don't know. It's very expensive to refurbish interior. You can spend anywhere, especially with a lot more space in the back. I think we spent $16,000 redoing the interior on the Piper Dakota, and this has two extra seats. So leather is very expensive. Then you got carpet, you've got the headliner, which does need to be replaced here before too long. So maybe in the future, but that's another twenty-five dollars to $30,000 project, which is the very last on the totem pole. It's the last thing we really care about because the seats are in great shape right now. But something I love about the A36 versus the V-Tail, which is what we initially looked like, looked at whenever upgrading from the Piper Dakota, was having these four seats back here and having all the room. My parents loved to take this airplane down to Florida for the week, and they can just basically take all the seats out and fill their luggage, fill up groceries, whatever it might be. And of course, then we've got Bella wherever she goes. So this is the back of the A36 Bonanza, tons of room. We've got a little bit of cargo. Now they do make an option to expand the cargo, which I think is like a $10,000 option. I could be off on that, but it, I, it, I know it's anywhere from five to $10,000 just to give you a little extra room back behind these seats. So yeah, it's a beautiful plane. It gets the job done. Basically, whatever you fit in here, it can, you know, it can haul. Uh, I've taken five people, correction, yes, five people total in this aircraft in full fuel and the performance is still remarkable. So that's basically it. That's the tour of the inside of our A36 Bonanza.
All right, I hope you guys enjoyed the kind of cost breakdown on avionics and just the overall engine in general. So overview of this aircraft, we're sitting at around with every avionics piece of equipment, the starter that we had to replace last week, the governor prop overhaul, everything we've done, about 210 to $220,000 and with current market value and the insurance appraisal we just received it's worth about 250 so yes that means we're technically in the positive we're making money on this aircraft that's why i think it's a great time to get into general aviation if you're considering it make sure you please do your research and a lot of these values are estimated um, so like i said if you've got any questions throw them in the comments down below i'll make sure to really pay attention to comments on this video because this is a big big deal you're talking about potentially taking out a mortgage to to own an aircraft so it's a really important thing and it's a big step in a lot of people's lives to get into general aviation i highly suggest it. it's one of the best things ever uh, just being able to pull your aircraft out and, and and go to florida for the weekend not worrying about tsa not worrying about flights all that stuff uh it's it's very nice and like my father said he's been out of general aviation for almost 30 years and once we got the piper dakota the aircraft before this he said it's one of the best things he could have done is get back into it it's just so freeing uh it's an amazing thing to be a part of it's an amazing community like i said before the aviation community is very small it's just awesome to be a part of so some other costs um with this aircraft let's start with insurance a lot of people don't think about this they see their monthly payment or what it'll cost to afford the aircraft but then they don't think about other associated costs so just basic costs there's going to be a few things i'm going to leave out but like i said ask questions i'll be sure to answer in the comments below insurance is three thousand dollars a year uh that seems like a lot it's twice of what we paid for the 1975 crush the 1979 piper dakota it's because it's bigger it's faster it's got a retractable gear. All these things increase costs, and that goes across the board. Hangar space, it's bigger. It's gonna cost more in a hangar because it takes up, that can potentially put less aircraft in. So you've got insurance, 3,000 a year. And then a lot of you know, you have to get an annual once a year. That's also $3,000. And that's going into the annual and nothing needed to be done. Then you have oil, stuff like oil. Uh, it's $150 in oil change. We change it every 25 hours. The hangar is $270 a month, it's $3,200 a year. So right there, right off the bat, you have your annual inspection, you've got your insurance, and you've got your hangar, all right about $3,000 a year. So that's nine grand right there. Let's say your, your payments, is, you know, from $800, you've got to break down that nine grand into every single month, divide that out by 12, and those are just very simplistic you know things that a lot of people don't even think about and then we've got fuel costs which fuel on average in this area is around four dollars and 75 cents a gallon and it's this aircraft burns around 15 gallons an hour so that comes out to around 72 dollars an hour just burning on fuel then like i said you've got oil you have to replace the oil we do it every 25 hours and that's 150 dollars and then you have unscheduled stuff that can happen to the aircraft out of nowhere. You can blow a, a tire and then you have to replace tires and that's $600. Uh, there's so many different things. Like this last annual, we actually had to replace our ELT and our ELT antenna. The ELT antenna was like $1,200. It's just un, unscheduled costs that you really don't think about, uh, but you need to take into consideration. So overall with the price breakdown of you know from the prop overhaul to engine overhaul to your oil to your annual to your pedostatic inspection every two years we estimate this aircraft costs around 200 dollars an hour to operate which is expensive but it's like i said there's a lot of benefits of having your own aircraft so i hope i covered a lot of the you know general cost of being in general aviation like i said i am sure i miss a few things and if you guys have questions please 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 leave comments down below if i miss something if there's something that you've done a little market research and you can correct me on price wise please make sure you do that help each other out and i hope you guys enjoyed this video if you did make sure you smash the thumbs up button subscribe if you're new here and get ready for the next video because we're going to the beach peace